Well, speaking of DA's race, so let's talk about Seneca County now. We'll jump into Seneca okay. County. Uh, here are the contested races as they sit. Currently, obviously, the heated race for district attorney, uh, county treasurer, uh, county coroner, uh, two available seats, but I believe three are running. Uh, covert Town Supervisor, Covert Town Council, uh, Fayette Highway, Junius Town Supervisor, Lodi Town Council, Ovid Town Council, Romulus Town Council, uh, sent two Seneca Falls uh, County Supervisor seats. These are those at-large uh, seats that mm -hmm. don't serve as a town supervisor but just serve on the county board. Uh, Seneca Falls Town Council, Town of Tire Supervisor, Tire Town Council, uh, Tire Highway Superintendent, Varick Town Council, Waterloo Supervisor, also two seats at large. And then also the Waterloo Town Supervisor seat is up as Gary Westfall uh, walks away from politics. Um, and then Waterloo Town Council, uh, two seats that are actually up, and then another to fill a vacancy. Got two people running for that vacancy. And then the Waterloo Tax Collector. Right. <laughs> A lot of races happening there. Um, to me, personally, seems like the most interesting ones. Uh, obviously, the district attorney's race, for reasons that we will likely discuss here. Uh, the Seneca Falls and Waterloo supervisor mm -hmm. races for the at-large seats. Mm -hmm. um, both really interesting. The Junius Town supervisor race, that's been one that I have... Um, I found really interesting. Well, they had a shakeup in the primary, right? So, so uh, that was Greg Wadhams, who right. was the sitting supervisor, lost his lost his primary, right. his Republican primary, lost to one of his uh, board members, and now we'll have uh, Ernie Brownell uh, take on Ron Servin. Ron Servin, a former uh, supervisor in Junius, so uh, a return possibly of a former face, right, in politics, which isn't unusual. In local, right. in local government, it isn't unusual to see people walk away for a few years and then step back into it. Um, of course, the Seneca Falls supervisor race, race for those two at-large seats, uh, Rachel Wild, Tim Hopkins, Paul Cronenwetter, uh, Ralph Lott. Really interesting race because it's a mix of uh, incumbency, name recognition, uh, really diverse backgrounds, some new ideas, mm -hmm. uh, po uh, political newcomers. It's a, it's a really, really like across the board um, spread. And I, I have the feeling personally that uh, the Republicans have the advantage at this point only because of how Seneca, what Seneca County's uh, voter makeup looks okay. like. That said, um, expect the unexpected you know yeah. you, you never can tell and no one has been no one from any of these Seneca Falls races whether it be uh, Seneca Falls the supervisor race the town council race no one has been campaigning I'll say really hard in that they've been uh, throwing shots at anyone or anything like that right. in the last several weeks it's been very quiet it's been very uh, contained and, you know, aside from an appearance, uh, but the candidates came on uh, my podcast last week and then the beginning of this week to talk about their races. Aside from that, it's been a, a really quiet um, campaign so far. And I, it'll be very interesting to see how it turns out, because, of course, it will ultimately be connected to the landfill right. because Seneca Falls cannot unchain itself from this polarizing issue that just keeps the town, the community completely divided right so it will be interesting to see how this sort of plays out and you know yeah and I think um I, I mean of all the candidates that are running for that Seneca Falls supervisor uh race Rachel Wheels the the only candidate I've been able to um to hear from uh directly in person but I think with you having invited them onto the show, it's interesting to see different perspectives in their approach to what the relationship should be between the Seneca County Board of Supervisors and the Seneca Falls Town Board in terms of whose territory is whose uh, in terms of the um, the landfill. So, you know, this, this odor control monitoring um, 
complaint, this online complaint system, which we've talked about before, which seem, seemed like common sense. Of course, you want an independent vehicle to receive complaints instead of uh, the potential offender uh, policing themselves. I mean, just the idea of that, if you think about it like from a criminal justice perspective, we wouldn't allow that. We, we wouldn't say, um, hey, you're on probation. Uh, it's up to you to tell us if you have violated or not, and we'll just take your word for it. Um, so that issue, I think, might be something that is still in people's minds as they're heading to the polls. And I mm -hmm. hope that it is because I do think that Seneca County, as a county, has a vested interest in economic and environmental social justice issue, um, stake in making sure that the Seneca Falls Town Board um, is not the only or last say in the operations of the landfill. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to me to see how that how that shakes out because I think that will tell a lot about how people are viewing the issue and what kind of oversight they're they're looking for, they're comfortable with. So, so.